Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today, where we will be taking a look at how to share access to a Kubernetes cluster securely via Lens VIDE. My name is Edward Eno, and just so everybody knows that this is a demo-rich webinar, we will take a look at a quick presentation, and from there, we will transition into taking a look at and showcasing the new features of Lens 5 that was just released on Tuesday, um, June 29th. Excellent. Without further ado, let's jump into the presentation and then we will transition directly into the demo rich webinar itself. I'll start off by sharing my screen. This is Lens, but we will go to my presentation. Excellent. Hoping everybody can see this. This is Lens 5. And today we will be demonstrating how to share access to a Kubernetes cluster securely. So a little bit about myself, um, I am responsible for growth for all of our open source technologies here at Marantis, that's specifically Lens and K-Zeros. K-Zeros is a Kubernetes distro brought to you by Marantis. And I'm really focused on developer relations. I like to seek out the pain points with Kubernetes and other cloud native technologies to really help streamline developer and operator initiatives when working with container orchestration, Kubernetes, or other cloud native technologies. So this slide is quite self-explanatory, but I'll talk about it just a little bit, but I'm sure we all already understand this. Kubernetes is quite challenging. Whether you're a novice or an expert, we all know that Kubernetes is challenging. Organizations, people, individuals invest a lot of time, resources, and money into Kubernetes, but many developers think that it's quite complicated and the adoption of Kubernetes maybe within the organization or the team you're working for is generally quite slow. Typically, this will tr translate into not seeing the best return on investment that you should with your container initiatives. And this is actually where Lens comes in. Lens is a 100% open source desktop application for all of your Kubernetes needs. It works with any certified Kubernetes distribution, and it really does allow developers, operators, site reliability engineers to easily onboard their applications directly into Kubernetes, hopefully improving productivity and increasing your return on investment that you would like to see for your container initiatives. So this is a slide I love to show, um, just so everybody understands how far we have come since we open sourced the project back in March of 2020. We currently have roughly 15,000 GitHub stargazers and over 200,000 users. On the bottom hand right of the screen, you can see that we have 5 million downloads. And this is something that we want to really thank our community for. Um, the growth has been completely organic. And again, we want to thank our community for helping us shape our roadmap, sharing Lens the IDE, and really leveraging our technology and our features for their Kubernetes initiatives. We could not be more thankful for the wonderful cloud native community and the ecosystem that we are all within. And we are looking forward to building more features and open source technologies in the future. Excellent. So what are we going to be taking a look at today? Lens has many, many different features and functionalities, and we won't be taking a look at all of those today. The main functionality and feature that we will be exploring today is Lens Spaces. And Lens Spaces is a feature that allows our users to share access to a Kubernetes cluster via Lens Spaces. Now, I didn't say that you would share your Kubernetes cluster with one another, but instead you're sharing access to that Kubernetes cluster and you're always leveraging your role-based access control from that kubeconfig file. Another thing we'll be taking a look at is a new feature that came out with Lens 5 and Lens 5 launched on June 29th of 2021. And that is accessing a catalog within Lens. And the catalog should be thought of as your personal cloud native directory, where you can have various different cloud native resources on your Lens desktop application, whether it's clusters, web links, automations, extensions, all of these things now live in one beautiful place or directory within Lens, the desktop application. The third feature, and actually one of my favorite features brought to Lens 5, is the ability to build specific workflows via the new feature called Hotbar. Hotbar should be thought of as your main navigation 
for Lens and within the desktop application. And the way we build these hotbars is users now have the ability to drag and drop a cluster directly into the navigation or an extension or a web link for easeability and improving efficiency when working with Kubernetes. And we'll take a look at this further when we do the demo. So without further ado, I wanna take this moment to thank each and every single one of you once again for joining me today. And if you're watching this on demand, thank you all as well. We will be taking a look at once again, how to share access to a Kubernetes cluster via Lens Spaces. Let's jump directly into the demo. Excellent. Here we can see that I'm actually within my desktop application, which is Lens. And once again, this is an open source project built by Team Lens. And here real quick, I just wanna highlight some of the fun features and the functionality that, that is out of the box with Lens or is always available even prior to the Lens 5 release, which is the pre-built in Prometheus that we can all leverage to better understand how our cluster is performing in the last hour from the CPU, the memory, and the pods. If you wanna see more of the Lens features and functionalities, I suggest you go take a look at another CNCF webinar that we did, which is called Take Control of Multi-Cluster Kubernetes Management with Lens IDE. Excellent. Let's actually jump into Lens Spaces. In order to access Lens Spaces, users will need to create an account to keep all their data and their clusters when sharing them or sharing access to them secure. So creating a, uh, an account is simple and straightforward. We click Lens Login. It'll redirect us to this browser. And within this browser, we have the ability to log in or create an account at the bottom hand of the screen. Excellent, we are now logged in. If I jump back to Lens, we'll see my username on the bottom right of the screen. From here, we'll click my username, go to my profile. We can take a look at my profile. We can change things. We can add a profile picture, we can view my account. And of course, we can view my spaces. Going back to our catalog, which is this button on the top and left side, we have the ability to do several different things. We can go to our general, which is typically our catalog, our preferences, our settings. We can go view our clusters, the clusters that are currently running within Lens. And of course, I can click on them and open that cluster to view pods, other objects, resources, and so forth. And then, of course, we can always get a granular view of that particular object. But this isn't what we're going to take a look at today. We're actually going to take a look at creating a space, adding a cluster to that space, and inviting a team member to that space where they can now have access to that Kubernetes cluster. So we'll click spaces on the bottom of our catalog, click this large plus icon, and we'll create a new space. Let's call this space CNCF webinar. Click enter. And on the top of the right side, uh, you can see that this space has now been created. From here, we'll open up this space, click to open. We'll brought, be brought to more of a settings page of this specific space where we're going to want to invite a team member to this space. Oh, I actually opened the wrong one. I can see CNCF space here, but let me copy and paste this test of username. We'll close this, go back to our spaces and we'll click CNCF webinar. This is the one we care about. Go to members. We can see we have no members currently, but we do want to invite a new member. Since I do not have a colleague with me today, we will be using a test account, my test account, to actually invite myself another account to this space. And then we'll log back into this account and share a Kubernetes cluster to the space, and we can go from there. So I'll invite a new member. Whoops. There's two ways to do this. You can either invite them by username or email, or you can send them a very simple invite link, which is actually my favorite way to invite a colleague. I can just drop it into Slack, 
Google Chat, Hangouts, whatever form of communication I use, I can just drop them a link directly to that space. They can click it, they can accept the invite and immediately have access. We'll copy and paste my name, hit enter. Oh, we don't want at test. Oops. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's why. Invite sent to tester Edward. Before accepting this invite, I am going ahead and going to add a Kubernetes cluster directly to this space. Once we add this cluster to the space, we will log into my other account and view that Kubernetes cluster. And again, we are always leveraging your role-based access control from that kubeconfig file. So just because someone has access to that Kubernetes cluster does not mean they can perform admin functions to that cluster. For example, shelling into the node or cordoning a node and so forth. I wanna make that quite clear that the access is always going to be granted via the kubeconfig, but you can share the cluster or not the cluster, but access to the cluster very, very easily. Excellent. From here, we'll click our clusters. And in case you guys have not realized yet, this is the catalog. And the catalog allows you to filter by general settings, cluster, web links, and spaces. And there's going to be more cloud native resources brought to the catalog shortly. But I like to filter and click clusters. I have two clusters here. I have my K0s cluster and I have a GKE cluster as well. I can open this cluster if I choose to do so. View the pause and so forth. But we are actually going to go back to catalog. Go back to my cluster and we're going to hit this Eclipse button. We're going to share. And from here, we can choose on the right hand side which space we are going to share this cluster with. And this is where it's very, very cool. We'll click CNCF webinar. We can see that tester Edwards invite is pending. We'll install the cluster connect, which is the backbone technology of lens spaces. And this connects to the correct Kubernetes endpoint. Lens space cluster connect has been installed. We can see there is now a third cluster and the source is no longer local, it's lens spaces. This is important to note. From here, we're actually going to log out Logout has been successful. We're gonna log back in. But we're gonna log in as our tester account. Excellent. We'll jump back to spaces. And here we can see tester Edward will go to my profile, spaces. And on the bottom right hand side, we can see our invitations. And we can see that we have been inv invited to the space CNCF webinar. If we click accept, we'll join that space. But I do wanna note that we have the two clusters here and this makes sense because this is my lens desktop application, but we do not have the third cluster here, which is the lens spaces cluster, right? So if we jump back to my profile, go to my spaces, accept this invite. We have now accepted this invite. We can see the spaces that I'm actually currently a part of. I'm the owner of one, which is the tester, Edward, and I'm a member of two others, the CNCF webinar and the CNCF space. We can close this and immediately see we have a new cluster within our catalog, which is the lens spaces cluster. We can see our label space equals CNCF webinar, distro unknown, but clicking here, we can click to open this cluster and immediately have access to this cluster via Lens Spaces. And this is really the highlight of Lens 5. And as you can see here, the metrics are no longer available. And that's specifically because I do not have the correct permissions to view these specific things. So we can't even see how these nodes are performing. We don't see the metrics. And I'm sure I can't shell into this. Error occurred, right? So we're maintaining the correct permissions of this cluster, which is extremely important to note. Awesome, so we took a look real quick 
at how to share access to a Kubernetes cluster via Lens Spaces. And again, we use two accounts. Unfortunately, I do not have a colleague here, but I logged into another account. I shared the cluster with that account. And then we were able to see the new cluster directly in our catalog. Going back to our catalog where we can see all of our different resources, we have various different resources from our general resources to our Kubernetes clusters, which we can see we have three, from our spaces, which we have three, and of course, our web links. Web links are the next thing I want to talk about, and we'll talk about this quite briefly. Web links is a new feature brought to Lens 5 that allows you to very easily create a web link and attach it to the Lens desktop application, which is going to allow you to immediately jump to a web page. For example, I can always view the Lens Twitter. Clicking here will bring me directly to our Lens Twitter account. Jumping back to the spaces, clicking this link will bring us to, I think this is our blog. It brings us directly to our blog. And I do wanna know everybody that go read our new Lens 5 release. This is going to touch on all of our features, everything in the change log and so forth. But jumping back to the demo itself, let's actually create a web link. All we have to do is hit the plus icon when we're within the web link section of our catalog and we can just enter a URL. For example, you can have a kubectl cheat sheet added to Lens to be able to help you whenever you're creating, let's say, additional resources, a new deployment, or whatever type of responsibility or activity you are doing within your Kubernetes cluster directly in Lens. So I, I love um, the web links. This is a new feature brought to you by Lens 5, and it's absolutely amazing to really improve efficiency when working with Kubernetes or Lens because Again, you can have tutorials, blogs, YouTube videos directly added to your Lens desktop application. One simple click, and you can immediately be brought to that web page to view that resource. So we'll actually add one. And maybe we can just do LinkedIn. And we'll go to my personal LinkedIn. We'll grab this link, jump back here, add the link, select enter, we'll give it a name. Edwards LinkedIn feed. And we can see it is now here and, it, and it's local. So I created this one. These ones are pre-built within the application. And of course I can click here and we're brought to our LinkedIn feed. I think this is awesome. Very, very cool. From here, we're actually going to transition into the hot bar. And maybe many of you guys have already noticed the hot bar. And it's that nav navigation bar that I've been clicking on when going from cluster to catalog to settings and so forth. It's this left hand bar. And anything within your catalog can actually be added to your hot bar. So here I have my Kubernetes documentation page. Click this, immediately open the doc page. So that's a web link. I also have clusters, right? And of course, if I'm going back to my catalog, I can add spaces here as well. So on the right hand side, we'll click this and we'll pin the CNCF space, or actually let's do the CNCF webinar space to our hotbar. And all of these things are customizable as well. But now you can see I am within the settings for our CNCF webinar space. This account is not the owner of the space, so I won't be able to change anything, as you can see. And we can view our members and also admins have the right to create teams and give additional responsibilities and permissions within the teams itself. So going back, we'll jump to our K0s cluster, we'll view our pods, we'll open them and so forth. And then we'll jump back to a space if we choose to do so. We can invite a member immediately if we had the correct permissions. I do not have the correct permissions, as you can see, because again, this is a tester account that was invited by my real account. But this is Lens 5 and its features. And we've talked about several things, right? We talked about being able to share access to a Kubernetes cluster. We reviewed our catalog, which is going to store your clusters, your web links, your spaces, and soon to be various other resources as well. And we also took a look at 
our web links, being able to create a web link that's going to help us with whatever activity or um, responsibility that we have for this particular day or um, feature or whatever it may be. And we took a look at Hotbar, being able to add one of these resources from our catalog directly to our Hotbar. So now I just pinned our preferences to our Hotbar. And I can view my preferences. This is my lens app preferences. I can switch it to light and jump back over and we can see our catalog again, our clusters, our workloads and so forth, right? Jump back to preferences. I wanna make it dark again, close this and now it's dark. So when working with multiple Kubernetes clusters, multiple web links, multiple spaces, this is where the efficiency aspect comes in from Lens Hotbar. You can have as many hotbars or items within the hotbar that you'd like. And what I do is that I actually create various different pages, right? And they're labeled one, two, three, four, five. And what I do here, and it keeps going. And what I do here is I like to create workspaces. So page one can be all of my production grade clusters with all the web links needed for my production grade clusters. Page two can be all of my proof of concept clusters and so forth. So this is going to allow us to create specific workflows, automations, when working within the Lens desktop application and various Kubernetes clusters or cloud native resources. Awesome. So we took a look at three different key core functionalities and features brought to you, brought to Lens via the Lens 5 release, which happened on June 29th. And again, I wanna thank each and every single one of you for joining me here today. I'm quite, quite excited about Lens 5. And I really do wanna encourage each and every single one of you to give Lens 5 a try, invite a colleague to your space, give them access to your cluster and see the power behind Lens the Kubernetes IDE. Before we leave, we'll jump back to the slides. So it wants to load. Does, it looks like it does not want to load, unfortunately. Um, but that's all right. So again, I wanna thank each and every single one of you for joining me today. This was an awesome session where we talked about Lens 5 and its new features and being able to share access to your Kubernetes cluster and space very, very efficiently. Thank you all and bye-bye.